thinking about, you know, what your concern is and how you manage that. And then another infield one is really looking at your actual use of fertilizer and nutrients. So when we're feeding that plant, can we change the timing? Can we change the rate and make multiple applications? Anything we can do to really improve that efficiency um, is going to help ensure that the, the growing crops are taking that up instead of leaving any risk to be lost. Welcome to Illinois Corn TV. My name is Lindsay Mitchell and I'm the Director of Communications and Marketing here at Illinois Corn. On this show, we bring you informative ag interviews to position Illinois farmers to grow. We've broken this show up into two parts, so let's get started with part one. Our featured interview with Megan Dwyer is next. Megan is the Director of Conservation and Nutrient Stewardship here at Illinois Corn. And this week, she and I got to talk a lot about the Nutrient Loss Reduction Strategy or NLRS. Megan and I chatted about the sets of practices that farmers can employ to reduce nutrient runoff from agricultural lands. Let's jump into the interview. Hi, Megan. How are you today? Doing great. How are you, Lindsay? I'm great. So today we want to help farmers in Illinois understand the nutrient loss reduction strategy. Can you tell us in your own words, like, what is that and why does it matter to farmers? Yeah, so the NLRS has actually been around for almost a decade, and I'm still surprised by how many farmers aren't aware of it or maybe not aware of, you know, phrasing it as the Illinois Nutrient Loss Reduction Strategy. But what it is, is um, several states in the Mississippi River Basin were tasked with helping the EPA meet goals of nutrient loss. So preventing nitrates and phosphorus from making their way down to the Gulf of Mexico and contributing to the dead zone that we hear about. And so Illinois, it's a voluntary initiative. Um, again, been around for almost a decade now. We have some interim goals here coming up in 2025, but really it's all around how can we keep those nutrients, particularly phosphorus and nitrogen on the field and being utilized by the crops that need them to grow. And so why is it important? Like why should farmers care about that? Yeah, you know, I feel like in ag, we're always thinking and, and kind of talking about that imminent threat of something to happen, right? Especially from a regulatory perspective. And this is really the, that opportunity to prove that we don't need to be regulated, that voluntary efforts can work. Um, so I mentioned we've got some interim goals coming up. Those goals consist of seeing a reduction in nitrates leaving the state of Illinois uh, by 15% and phosphorus a reduction of 25%. Unfortunately, the most most uh, recent biennial report would show that we are still seeing an increase. And there's a lot that goes into that. There's things, you know, out of our control. We're seeing an increase in flow. So added water coming in to the, the landscape, um, doing some more research on what's maybe um, been existing in the soil profile for decades. And there was some stream bank erosion and other factors that we see a, an increase in contribution to those levels. But at the end of the day, uh, there's still work to be done. So we think about, you know, there's over 22 million acres of row crop land in Illinois, and less than a million of those acres have a cover crop on them. Um, so there's lots of things. I think we're going to maybe talk about this a little bit later, Lindsay, on, you know, what those practices are, what a farmer can do. Um, but at the end of the day, there's still an opportunity for everybody to be engaged and involved in this. So let's pivot a little bit and talk about, um, I've heard a fact thrown around that every acre should have one new conservation practice in order for us to start addressing the goals of the nutrient loss reduction strategy. What are some of those practices and um, how can farmers kind of learn more or experiment with those practices? Yeah, you know, I really think if you think about the the shift that happened over a generation really on going from low board plows to the field cultivator. To me, this is looking at this as that next big generational shift. What's going to be this whole new system change that's going to become the new norm for farming. And to your point, it would be amazing if we could get every farmer in Illinois committed to trying one new thing. Um, and there's ways to do that in field and edge of field. Um, at Illinois Corn, we're really focused on infield, which means we want to make sure that the nutrients and products that you're applying to that field stay in the field uh, before they even have a chance to get to those field borders. So some of those things revolve around your tillage practice. Can you go maybe start utilizing strip till if you still would like to have a little bit of that fluffed up seed bed um, and looking at some of that the fertilizer efficiency? 
Maybe you can commit all the way to going no-till. Uh, things like growing cover crops, which would be planting some living cover in the winter to make sure that that ground always has living roots and living shoots that can scavenge any excess nutrients. And we also have to think about in Illinois, we have such fertile soils that the natural mineralization, so the natural nitrogen cycle and the microbes and the bugs working in that soil are creating nitrogen. And so if we have a crop, whether we're adding extra nitrogen or not, there may be excess available in the soil. And so having a cover crop available um, and in place to scavenge some of that can be really helpful. It can also help with preventing soil loss. And that's, you know, part of this too. The way the nutrients are potentially lost is not the same. Nitrogen is very water soluble. Phosphorus tends to leave with the soil particles. And so thinking about, you know, what your concern is and how you manage that. And then another infield one is really looking at your actual use of fertilizer and nutrients. So when we're feeding that plant, can we change the timing? Can we change the rate and make multiple applications? Anything we can do to really improve that efficiency um, is going to help ensure that the, the growing crops are taking that up instead of leaving any risk to be lost. So I know we've talked about this for the last 10 years or more. What progress have farmers made? I mean, do we have any numbers or data or even anecdotal conversations that we know farmers are changing? Yeah, we do. Um, you know, you think about information and that's one thing um, that's been honestly a little challenging. Some practices like tillage and cover crops just aren't reported everywhere. Now, one thing that's kind of changed that there's been some state level programs, Illinois included, with a program called Fall Covers for Spring Savings. And it's a pretty simple program that can provide a $5 benefit on your crop insurance if you plant a cover crop. One of the caveats was you had to actually report that cover crop on your 578, so your crop reporting form. And up until then, there really wasn't a reason to do that. And so that's really helped us be able to track and quantify um, what's being done on the farm. Um, again, I think you're going to maybe talk to my coworker, Greg, later more about PCM, and you can talk uh, to him about the, the farmers that they have participating and that are eager to do this. The other thing, the USDA has invested $3 billion recently in Climate Smart Commodity Grants. And those programs are really going to bring in thousands of farmers that have never participated in these programs in the past. Um, programs being ways to incentivize things like cover crops and tillage and your nutrient plans. And so I'm pretty excited to see that work um, being rolled out here over the next you know, several months. Can you tell me a little bit about how Illinois Corn has been involved? I know that we have some programs that will help farmers sort of try a new uh, conservation opportunity management. So Tell us more about Illinois Corn's involvement. I mean, you know, first and foremost, we've got two boards of amazing leaders. So farmer leaders that are spread out across the state that we really help empower and make sure that they understand these issues and can go home and be real advocates um, in their communities. Working on beyond that, we've got staff that's dedicated to kind of that water quality space. Uh, so doing things around, we mentioned PCM that you'll hear in grave detail later, but also have worked with seed companies like Bex Hybrids to offer a first-time cover crop program. So a simple program where an aerial application of cover crop seed is applied of a winter kill, which means that uh, when it gets super cold, that species that's been flown on will die. So the farmer doesn't have to worry about how they, they terminate that in the spring. Uh, we've done that. We also work hand in hand with um, several cover crop seed companies across the state, and we offer a coupon to our members. So work on promoting the brands of some of these reputable seed, cover crop seed dealers, and then our members can receive a, a financial discount. We also try, again, on the awareness and making sure people understand what, what's at stake is looking at nitrogen loss. Um, so we've partnered with FFA chapters across the state to kind of do a fun little research contest. Uh, we equip them with some nitrate monitoring equipment, uh, and test strips and they go out and, and hypothesize like what do they think they're going to find based on different scenarios when it comes to does this particular field have a, a different tillage strategy or a different nutrient management plan and then see what those results are and then work on developing what is a plan uh, that that farmer could use this does a, a couple of things it helps make sure that local farmers are more engaged but it also helps our next um, generation of agriculturalists really feel committed and, and like they've got a problem to work on um, as well. So uh, really just try and be all different places. And then again, our focus is keeping things voluntary. And there are so many threats out there that truly are real. So spending time on working with agency officials, um, helping them understand what are the challenges. You know, we know 
um, that Illinois has a high percent of non-operating landowners. That means that while so many of our farm families in Illinois are truly families and it's a family business, they have to rent those assets. So for us, for a farmer, that asset is the land. So we might not own it all. We have to rent it. And working with those landowners can be a challenge sometimes. Sometimes they have a different ultimate goal in mind for that farm. And so it, it can be a challenge to find that compromise, especially when these practices cost money. So that that plays into some of the challenges and, and opportunities we have. Uh, we also think that the practices, when we're thinking nutrient loss, also have co-benefits. So there's so much coming in the renewable fuel space and sustainable aviation fuel, that these practices are going to have co-benefits that positively impact what a farmer can see when they're selling that corn. Um, we're seeing things come from the EPA with the Endangered Species Act and what practices are going to have to be in place to be able to even use some of these crop protection products that farmers are so used to using. I think there's a couple of really interesting things there that you brought up. I really love, as a staff member at Illinois Corn, I love how we're always thinking about the future, and I love that you pointed out that we're really helping to bring along the next generation of agriculturalists and help them understand why this is super important. So then when they're the ones who are running the acres, they maybe are just intrinsically invested in changing these practices or doing the different ideas, trying out new things on their land. So that's really cool. I know that you also mentioned working with landowners, and I think Illinois Corn um, has helped bring an opportunity for you to guide conversations with your landowners. Uh, can you touch on that? Yeah, great. Thanks for bringing that up, Lindsay. Um, so we know, again, that such a high percent of our land is rented in Illinois, and most of the time there's a lease agreement in place. Now, sometimes that's verbal. It's great if it's written. So we said, okay, what can we do to help provide some of that framework? And so working with uh, University of Illinois and their FarmDoc team, there are actually some lease addendums you can go out and find right now on the FarmDoc website, um, and they help provide that framework. So say you're the farmer or the landowner, Owner and you're interested in, in seeing some of these practices on your farm, whether that's cover crops, whether that's a change and wanting to see all of the nitrogen applied during the growing season. Um, and it helps really kind of lay out who's responsible for what, if there are costs associated, or if there's an incentive, maybe you're going to enter a carbon market with some of this, who is going to you know really benefit from that and just kind of, again, provide that framework, regardless of what side of the conversation you're on. Yeah, I think there's some really useful resources out there, and I hope that the farmers who tune in here are looking for those resources, and hopefully we can provide some um, ideas in the comments. I guess to kind of wrap this up, I'm interested in what's at risk. Like, help our farmers who are tuning in understand what is at risk if they don't try a conservation practice and if we don't meet the goals of the nutrient loss reduction strategy. Yeah, and I wish I had that silver ball that could tell me what's going to happen when 2025 hits, since that's staring us in the face right now. Um, but I think you can just look around and see the tone of the conversation from some of the other stakeholders. And I'm not talking ag stakeholders, but some of the other groups that are very concerned um, about the environmental impacts of what's happening. And, you know, the tolerance of giving us time to voluntarily do this um, is growing thin. And, you know, there's been some legislation that's been introduced in the last few years in Illinois that we've been able to prevent moving. But I think it's a real indicator that there's interest from certain groups to see things more regulated. We talk about full nitrogen applications. You know, I think there are things out there that make very easy targets and it's being able to demonstrate that farmers are actively trying new things. We're utilizing new technology. I mean, that's another piece to this with practices. It's there's technology out there that makes us way more efficient in applying some of these things. Um, and it's being able to showcase how we're using that and, and making our nitrogen use efficiency scores, you know, 0.8 or lower um, and some great things to highlight. And it, it's a combination of, of really showcasing those champions and, and success stories, um, but also continuing to move forward and, and really making sure, like I said, less than a million acres out of 22 have a cover crop. It's really hard to argue with that when you when you see this. Um, for me, I, I really wish that, I don't know, maybe I'll put on, I'll borrow Tara's corn suit and go dancing on the interstate saying, hey, look at me. This is really important. Um, I just, you know, I, I wish that this could become some of that coffee shop talk. You know, um, if I had an unlimited budget, I would send out um, you know, hundreds of people across the state to go sit down to the morning coffee shops and just really be a catalyst for this conversation. So I think to summarize what I've heard today, it's 
This is really important. We know Illinois Corn knows that farmers want voluntary practices. We want voluntary practices for you. We've had your seat at the table. We've represented you in conversations. We've done everything that we can do to keep practices voluntary, but we can't do it alone. And so this is a call for farmers to really pay attention to the nutrient loss reduction strategy and start thinking about how they could contribute to a future that's full of voluntary practices for the next generation. Absolutely. And if they want to be the ones that have some of these conversations, reach out to Illinois Corn. We'd love to help give you some talking points or some of the science or data. And you know what? Like, go have the, be that coffee shop talk and and be that person and, and step up and really be that leader that we know you can be. All right. Thank you so much, Megan, for being a part of this conversation and for helping us help our farmers really understand the nutrient loss reduction strategy and what they can do. Yeah. Thanks, Lindsay. I, you know, it was great being on here. I, you know, I'm so excited that farmers are wanting to talk about this and thinking about, you know, their entire season, growing season and everything that they can do, whether it's thinking about those farm leases or crop insurance choices or fertilizer choices. And just throughout the whole growing season, we can really be engaged in this. So thank you again. Now let's move on to part two, not to be corny. Why did the phosphorus atom get invited to all the parties? I have no idea. <laughs> because it knows how to bond with everyone. You mentioned that phosphorus bonds to soil particles, right? I did, yeah. It, that's why we need those cover crops at the party to hold everybody together. This has been another episode of Illinois Corn TV, where we deliver insightful ag interviews that position farmers to grow. Stay tuned for more content every week and be sure to subscribe on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. We'll see you here next week.